Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 186. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews and special guests Katie and Ian from Missouri State University. Hi guys, how you doing? Great. What's up? <laughs> right on. We it, are in our rainy Springfield. Yeah. Oh, we got a heat wave going on here. Do you? Yeah. A solid cool. It's been raining here for two days. It's going <laughs> to rain for two more. When I got gigglers here. I, I do want to, before we get on to our show, which I, I want to say is probably our most important show we've done ever. Okay. I, I, I really believe that. I don't, I don't think I've ever said that before because I didn't mean it. But I do want to remind everyone that today is the 50th anniversary of Abbey Road. Oh, okay. So I've even got my T-shirt on. Right on. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably the happiest thing we'll talk about today. Okay. What are you we know, talking about? Um, we're talking about this mass shooter. And why mass shooters do what they do. What about society? Or where are we failing? Well, I thought it was all Trump's fault. Well, if you would listen <laughs> to the left, you would believe that. Of course. You know? And right now what worries me is we are preparing to create this database, this red flag database, that by design, is supposed to allow the authorities to know who they shouldn't sell guns to. <laughs> okay. Okay? Now, first of all, criminals will get guns. Okay? Exactly. Secondly, what will this database be used for in the future? You're a Christian, so you shouldn't get a gun. You're an atheist, so you shouldn't have a gun. It depends on who's in the White House, how that database is used. I could see that for sure. Problems. And it scares me. Yeah. And, you know, we have to think about what Benjamin Franklin said. He said, those who will give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So you've got to be careful about what you're willing to give up. You don't want to be sitting around with the only people having guns is the crazy people. you got to remember, you can also make guns now. You can get a 3D printer and make a gun. There are people with the skills, if you watch The American, um, oh my gosh, it was in that movie. I don't remember. But anyway, he made a gun. He showed everyone in that movie did how to make a gun. He was sitting in like Italy where you couldn't buy a gun, so he made one. Wow. You got to remember these guys are going to get the guns. And I, I know we're, we're living through a time where we're a little bit upset with our forefathers, you know. But the fact is they were pretty amazing. They thought about things that... They had no reference to think of. So whether you believe in God or not, it's kind of like they had divine intervention. Right. When they created this country. And for us to hand over our rights scares me for one. Now, we've got these students here because there is also the school of thought out there that millennials are the problem. Okay, so for those guys that are not blaming Trump, for the most part, they're blaming a, a generation. And I want to read, I really do like Matt Schlapp, um, and he really didn't blame gaming, but I, I, I want to read a quote from him. And he is a very prominent Republican. He says, Politicians didn't cause these shootings. In fact, government can't fix a society heading into the chaos 
created by glorification of violence, which I think you might be talking about naming there. The glorification of violence, divorce, the diminished role of fatherhood, rejection of faith, and a growing list of young, young boys who just want to hate. Now that part of that line really bothers me because I believe that there, that there is a, the opposite problem. The boys aren't wanting to hate. The boys are being hated upon. Ian, I'm going to let you take that first. Well, How does that make you feel? I mean, I definitely think they're, that he's kind of making a very generalization of that. And that, yeah, sometimes people are bad people right yeah. out of the gate. And they do just want to hate. Exactly. But if you look out in the world, that's a minority. That The majority of people, they do what they do because of what's been done to them. You like know? what? What's been done to them? Could be abuse. Could be... It could be abuse. It could be a lack of social interaction of some sort. Lack of care, love, no stable home. Um, could just be they're neglected in some form or way, and that caused them to adapt these strong ideas of violence. Okay, Katie, are these the people that play video games? Absolutely not. These are the people that I believe have been, if we're going down Ian's road, they're the types of people that have been so broken to the point that they feel that, well, this is the only way that people will notice me or this is the only way that I'll be able to feel something. And I know that sounds really dark. The shooting or the video games? Uh, I'm talking more about the shootings in that regard. Okay. I do not believe that... I mean, if you're going to... This is my argument with that. If you're going to blame video games for somebody's violence, you might as well take out books, you might as well take out phones, you might as well take out movies, you might as well take out any other type of media that has any form of violence at all. Because, sure, while gaming is more interactive, so are films. You can easily put yourself in the mind of a character, and that person could go in shooting up a bunch of people in that film. You could make yourself... Put yourself in the boots of a character in a book doing the same thing, and it's just as interactive, if not more. I mean, you'd okay, be going but like, are, they, are these people going to the table with a mental illness? I mean, if somebody has a mental illness and they play video games, is that a problem? Depends on... I mean, on, anything could have set them off. Yeah. It could have been a movie, it could have been a book, it could have been somebody said something that just stuck with them, you know? Um, yeah, video games could be a problem for those kinds of people. But it's just as likely any form of media or social thing could have done it. Let me go ahead and give a little story that I heard about a couple, I want to say about a year ago. There was a visual novel game that someone made by the name of Dan Salvato. He made a game called Doki Doki Literature Club. It was a dating simulator game that eventually turned horrifying in a way. It was in the horror genre. It had... Warnings at the beginning, do not play this unless you are 13 years of age or if you easily get anxiety or have suicidal thoughts. It talked about that in the very beginning. So by agreeing to play this game, you have consented that you are okay with that. There was a boy in somewhere in England, I want to say London, but I'm not fully sure. There was a boy that committed suicide and the father blamed the game because the game had suicidal tendencies in it. And... The news tried to make it seem like, oh, yes, it is the game's fault. We need to protect our children from these games, blah, blah, blah. And first of all, the game had a rating on it. Second of all, the game went out of its way to say, hey, are you okay with this? Third of all, if that child already had some sort of mental instability, such as depression, anxiety, maybe he already had suicidal thoughts and he went into that, it is the job of the parent to understand their child, understand what is going on, and help them through that situation without them going in and being influenced by things that at a young age you don't think you can control. Well, I don't know about this game, but there are a lot of movies that have romanticized suicide. Oh, good grief. And it has resulted in people committing suicide. It's, to me, now, that is... Is absolutely. that the movie or the game's fault? I... I think it's irresponsible to publish these things. I don't. 
I don't either. But I also believe in freedom of speech. Yes. I'm not necessarily, not, it doesn't really have to tie into freedom. I mean, it does have to tie into freedom of speech. But it's more like if you're telling a story and it is told as a story, whether you use it through a book, a movie, or well, I'm a not game. saying take suicide out. Oh, well, you have a show based on suicide, like Netflix did. Yeah, I know. Uh, like but, you're uh, talking like 13 Reasons Why. But, yeah. Um, I think if if you advertise it as a fictional story, or say based on a true story, and you're not going in with the intention of, you know, making people commit suicide, then at that point you're just telling a story. This is where... And so it's how people look at that and they react to that. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yeah, that might be a problem. Um, And yeah, I may not like it. But it's still a story and that shouldn't be taken away. But what we need to do is fix the fact that people do react in that way. Okay. And are these mass shooters really people and with the intent of committing suicide that just intend to take a few more people with them. I think it's so more complicated than that. It's so more. So, so more. Uh, to, to me, I'm just like, you could take like a mass shooter and uh, I don't I don't know, let's, let's take a school shooter, not this particular shooter, but let's say you grew up in an environment where you were constantly told like the people around you were not safe, don't talk to them, they're dangerous to you. So think about that. And now, it may not have been as direct as that. It might have just been you saw your parents kind of avoid people. They didn't really connect to people emotionally, and so you didn't either. And so then when you're out there in the public, you start looking around thinking all these people hate you and stuff like that. Or, you know, you're you're looking around and these people are basically, you kind of start to see them as the enemy. So would these be helicopter parents or paranoid parents? I, I, I mean, can a helicopter parent that supposedly cares so much? I'd say yeah. Do that. Do the same thing as a paranoid parent. Can yeah, you? I'd say definitely. Yeah. And this is where it kind of gets a bit more confusing and more complex because, you know, you have these people that sure might see the others as the enemy. Now, how they direct their emotions towards that, their idea of a fact also contributes for example that person might say oh well they're the enemy so i must fight in order to be safe but the fight or flight response you also have people that have the flight response or the freeze response and their thing is oh well if they're the enemy i need to stay as far away from possible no one look at me no one and who would the enemy be um immigrants in this guy's case i don't believe so i think i mean was he a white supremacist I don't believe so. I mean, if it was immigrants, he wouldn't have gone into, you know, he would have been going towards the immigrants. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I think sometimes people just... Well, that's why they said he did it in El Paso, the El Paso shooter. They said that he drove from his home near Dallas to El Paso because that's where so many immigrants are coming across the border. I mean, sure, he (laughs) might have been angry at the immigrants, and that might have been why he did that there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he wasn't just attacking immigrants... Mm -hmm. I think that proves not only was he angry at the immigrants, but he was angry at the rest of the world for not dealing with that problem. It could that be. That he saw, or he thought was a problem. And let's also you not... You know what I mean? Let's also not forget that people... The way that we grow up and the way that we perceive the world around us because of our influencers, whether that be parents, teachers, peers, whatever, that is going to dictate how we feel about those other things as we grow older. It could have... Now, granted, I have no idea... I have a feeling that it could have been that this person might have grown up in a home where he might have been told that this is bad, there's, you know, the country is ruined because blah, blah, and I'm just making stuff up right now. I don't know Mm -hmm. if this is true or not. But if you grow up with that mindset and it's pounded into you, when you finally grow up and you realize, oh, I'm an adult, I can take this into my own hands, they think that they're doing the world a service based off of what they've been taught, but in reality, they're doing everyone a disservice, including themselves. Okay, well, I'm going to play the devil out advocate here and say, you know, there's been bad parenting since the beginning of time. Absolutely. You know, there certainly hasn't been this kind of mass murder. Yeah. You know why that is? No. Why? Guns. <laughs> Okay, so you think it's because of guns? Yeah. Guns kill. Because people. never has it been more easy do to kill, kill a human people being. Or do guns kill people? 
I would say the guns do. I I would say people kill people, but having guns down at the corner store sure makes it easy. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I'm just saying, unless you have marks against you, which guaranteed nobody in this country is required to go get any sort of mental evaluation without a just cause. And I'm not saying they should, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying the fact is I or somebody near us could have extreme mental issues and maybe not even that. Maybe they're just having a really bad day and they got Mm -hmm. really angry Mm -hmm. and they could drive over to that pawn shop down the street, purchase a gun and go shoot whoever they want. Well, they have a waiting period. They could buy it from their neighbor, but they can't buy it from the pawn shop, not Missouri. Well, think about think about it this way. This is this is how I kind of think about it. What is easier, allowing everyone to own a gun, allowing everyone to have that right? Because right. here in America, we have the right to bear arms in certain states. Yeah. And okay, so let's let's take Ian's example. Let's say, oh, I'm having a super bad day. Well, let's see. Technically, I could get a gun, so let me just go get a gun. Is but you that can get easier? Get a knife too. Oh yeah, but oh, yeah. or. Do we say, oh, well, I'm having a bad day right now. I want to hurt somebody, but I got to go through background checks. I got to go through all the paperwork. I got to go through X, Y, Z in order to even being able to see a gun, let alone touch it. Mm-hmm. Man, that's too much work. I'm just going to calm no, down. Well, and that's why they have way. a three-day wait period in Missouri. All right. Okay. And I'm not saying it's instantaneous. And, and there are states that have a far longer wait period. Exactly. Now, the areas where the gun laws are the stiffest. But then you have the gun for next time. Yeah. Okay. But the, where they have the stiffest gun laws, the most people die in the United States. Which How states do you are explain those? that? Do you buy any Well, right now, Chicago. Chicago? Well, that's Chicago. Because if you um, do not devote yourself to solving a problem, and only small little bits of you or of a population are trying, you're going to have that happen. Yeah. Because the the law enforcement is not devoted to the cause. They because they don't have it yet. They don't have that cause okay. set forth for them. Say that your neighbor has had a bad day and he comes out with a gun. Is it better that you have one and you can take him down before he shoots all the neighbors? Or is it better that he's the only one with a gun? Or is it better that I call law enforcement no, and, get myself, can he and get myself to safety instead of attempting to be okay, the, law enforcement myself? The shooter in Ohio shot for 30 seconds. That's because law enforcement was called. That's, That's just right. it. No one went to him. No one attacked him. Someone called for backup. And that is why it was ended so fast. Because no one tried to play people hero. down in 30 seconds. True. Okay. That is true. The, the shooter in El Paso lasted less than two minutes. I mean, these these guns can shoot, you know. Now, he had, um, is it an AR-15, Connor? I think it, was, what an, it was. I think it was or an was, AK. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it was an AK. So the it it shoots very fast. They were in a gun free zone. Now in Texas, you have more people per capita that can carry Mm -hmm. than any other state in the union. Yes. Okay. It was a gun free zone. Okay. So none of the people that had the right to carry had their guns with them, and they said that was fatal. That had there been anybody. Kind of like the church shooting in Texas about, was that about a year, 18 months ago, where the guy took down the shooter so, with his own gun. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there was also the Waffle House incident. Yeah. But that wasn't a, that wasn't with his own gun, though. No. I think he just did that by hand. So, okay. Um, now, I want to um, talk about some important statistics here. Because I believe, ooh, ooh. It's really bad when you get everything confused, huh? Presidents, okay, under Bill Clinton, there were eight mass shootings, correct? The worst one was 13 dead, 24 injured. That was um, Columbine. Under During his whole presidency, eight years, there were 62 dead and 78 injured from mass shootings. George W. Bush, eight incidents. The worst was Virginia Tech, 
with 32 dead, 17 injured. During his presidency, um, 75 were dead, 62 injured. Barack Obama, there were 24 mass shootings. Pulse nightclub in Orlando was the worst, with 49 dead, 58 injured. During his presidency and mass shootings, 236 died, 257 were injured. Wow. Donald Trump, uh, four incidents. The Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas was the worst, with 58 dead, more than 500 injured. Um, there have been 83 die and more than 512 injured. Um, that's too many. Now, I will tell you that we look at these numbers, and these are all gun-related, okay? And I think that that's one of those situations where it's apples and oranges. And I'll tell you why. Because we're leaving out the bombings, and if you had the bombings in these numbers, it, it, it far outweighs the gun. Far outweighs. Okay? Unfortunately, we have made it political and race-related because white conservatives are more likely to use guns and left-wingers, particularly terror-driven, are more likely to use bombs. <laughs> we got a big problem with killing. I'm not sure how we separate the two. I know a good guy with the gun can help in both of these situations. But there's no good but guys with a bomb. <laughs> there's no good guys with a bomb. But a good guy with a gun can take a bomber down. But here's the thing. Would you rather risk having one good person among five bad people with guns, or would you rather risk having five good people with one bad Oh, gun? I'm a firmly believer in guns. Okay, so... The right to bear arms. It should yeah. not be the responsibility of the citizen to carry a gun no. for the protection of others. No, that is law enforcement's job. Oh, but, but we... We just we refuse more. to spend the money, too. We need more okay. law enforcement. Okay, we need more law enforcement. But what about when I go to the Social Security office or when I go to the courthouse, they got metal detectors, they got guys with guns, yet I can go down to the elementary school down the street and walk in. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And now, then, we will protect these entities and not our children. So the last, I don't know how many, 10, 12 school shootings... Those have supposedly been the last school shootings, right? Exactly. So they were the last ones, each one of them. Why isn't there a guard with? I mean, um, do you remember when we went to Columbia University? And they have a guard gate. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. And, and they, they can lock down that campus in 20 seconds, they yeah. told us. I think if I can cut in here, I actually, sure. I actually think part of the reason for that, and I don't know if it's right or not, because I'm the homeschool person here, but... I have a feeling that a big deal of it is because we have not put enough of our money and the country has not spent its money wisely enough to put it into the school system to pay for those types of things. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and, and I mean, I, I say, you know, um, when my eldest son was in school, they bought two embroidery machines for $65,000 a piece. Now, you got to remember, that's 15 years ago. Mm. Okay. Now, you could pay the wages of a couple of armed guards yeah. for those embroidery machines that did what for these students? I mean, Exactly. I mean, think about it. We, exactly. If we go even down this route, I know there's a whole can of worms. Sure. You open up about the school system. For one, they treat their students terribly. They give them shit lunches, pardon me, but they are given, they're malnourished. They are not given the chance to succeed. Instead, they are put in rows as if they are factory students, and they aren't given individualities that they should have as people. Okay. They are not given security. They are mm -hmm. given rules and regulations that are so strict that they feel like, again, they have no individuality. Mm -hmm. And I think a big piece of the security and the protection of our kids 
is not being handled properly. Instead, we're throwing money into the government. We're throwing money into the militia. We're throwing government. We're throwing money into all these different places when, in reality, we are neglecting the areas that need it the most, i.e., the school system. Well, and a lot of people yeah. are homeschooling their kids because they're not safe. Exactly. So. Um, so now this so, is something interesting in Missouri specifically. I can't remember when was it that we started using the lottery to pay part of education costs, and we cut like elsewhere. The minute we we started the lottery, okay. which would have been in the nineties, sometime. So, I, I, I don't know exactly. I didn't know this, but I had a professor for statistics, and he said that when that happened, the amount that schools got paid went down. It did go down. It did not go up. Yeah. And, and that, that's kind of a subject for another show, but because um, I would really like to do that show, mm-hmm. what you're talking about, but um, I don't want to digress too far from just keeping our kids safe, yeah. regardless of what they're doing in school. Of course. I mean, the, the biggest thing we need to start doing is protecting them, whether it's armed guards, fences. You could do a yeah, fence and not even have a guard. Yep. Well, I, th- I kind of think you need both. I think you need that little hat that's outside. I think you need the know. guard. You got to get through the hut all before you, you get to a building. All you got to do is pay a guy to stand in there for forty hours a week. Yeah, one guy. Yeah, they do it at Kraft, the manufacturing place out here. Yeah, and they got I'll, a little guard booth, and you've got to get beyond him. So if you got a bad guy, if you've got some space between the booth and the building, maybe that killing can go on. Right there. And think about it. Without getting inside. This yeah. is something that just popped in my head, and I could be wrong about this. Think about it. I know both stereotypically and truthfully, private schools have enough funding to where they normally do have guards. They normally do have gates. They where don't do, around here, but where do some most places. Of the I tell you what, when we're in New York, I don't see it there. You don't see I it? I don't see it. Well, this is what's interesting. I mean, the university level. Yeah. Now, Grant, I might be wrong about this, but I don't think I am. Where do most of the shootings happen? Not private schools, public oh, schools. Oh, of course, public schools. Public yeah. schools. And yeah. I do think that is because the private school has their own funding. They aren't relying well, on the government. Well, and there's also this argument that you don't have as much mental disease in a yeah. private school as you do They're in more school. picky. But, but the, the, the point I think they're is, probably different. Probably. <laughs> they're probably mental cases. The but. point being <laughs> is, and I actually joked about making this argument, but it was kind of serious. Instead of spending five billion walls to build a wall between two countries, why don't we spend five billion dollars to start building walls around our schools? Okay. Okay. And let's let's move. On. I I think that's a good statement. I I like the wall though on the border. I just want both. Um, now, just um, I I'd, I'd like to take just a second to um, Connor. Yeah. Give us just this a, a brief. What's it like to have a gun in Canada? And, and, and that's leading into, I've got some statistics here on um, the death rate and public shootings. But I want you to explain to us, for example, because a lot of countries like France, the UK, are very similar to Canada. Right. And right now they're looking at banning handguns. I think there was 10 shootings over the long weekend, all mostly gang related or, you know, some sort of bad guys. Um, And they, none of them get their drugs or drugs, guns legally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So no matter how many laws you're going to have, you're still going to have those guys with guns running around killing each other. You're not solving a problem. And I, I've been listening to what you guys are talking about, and so far, all you've talked about is what we need to do when it happens. Maybe because I have a little bit more technical mind, um, when I look at prov- problem solving, and this is a big problem to solve, so you have to look at first at the common denominator. Why is this problem happening? And we haven't talked a lot about that. And there's a few common denominators I see in every one of these mass shootings. Um, number one, almost every one of them, uh, I think you could probably consider an incel, which is an involuntary celibate. I mean, you just look at this group and you know they're not getting laid. Um, so, <laughs> so that's number one. Number two, most of them grew up in a single family home. 
Um, so they had a single mother. No father figure whatsoever right. in the picture. Okay. Those are the common denominators. And, and until you start addressing some of the um, social and mental problems around those situations, you're going to still have mass shootings. That's my full take on it. And, you know, we've had stuff go on in Canada, too. We just had a huge manhunt for um, two teenagers uh, that were from the island here. Uh, one of them worked at my local Walmart, so I actually recognized him from there. But these guys oh were, goodness. these two kids were apparently traveling all the way to uh, the Yukon to try and find work. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I guess about three weeks ago, there was an American girl and her Australian boyfriend found murdered on the side of the highway on their way to Alaska in the BC interior. Um, so there was a, you know, a serious uh, kind of request from the RCMP looking for information around, you know, what kind of happened to these two kids a few passing motorists says they passed and they were arguing with some bearded guy um then nobody had heard from these two kids for a while so th the police began a manhunt like for miss these kids missing and everybody assumed oh shit this this killer whoever it is has killed these kids uh, about a week later, they find the vehicle they were traveling in burnt out, and uh, I guess it would be about a quarter mile away or something like that. They found a body of a Vancouver man um, that was executed. So that was uh, three murders, um, and all of a sudden, the RCMP released uh, the statement saying that these two young guys were, were the suspects, the number one suspects, and they uh, led a trail right across the country um, through Alberta, through Saskatchewan, and they were almost at, um, you know, Churchill, Manitoba, which is, uh, you know, we're talking way north. There's, there's more mosquitoes per cubic foot than there is people per square mile. So, okay. yeah, and uh, they just actually yesterday found these two uh, had, had drowned. Had they committed some other, Oh, they had drowned? Okay. They don't know if they drowned or they committed suicide. Uh, they yeah. found a very badly damaged boat. Um, so it, it could have been a drowning. So yeah. uh, the, the autopsies today. But in those situations, again, what we see is uh, an incel and single parent family. The, the fathers weren't in the picture. So, the, the, you know, and... Fathers are very important. I, <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about it. So I think if you want to solve this problem, you got to address where the problem is coming from. And nobody's even talking about that. They're, instead, they're talking about taking guns away. Exactly. And, and in Canada, you can only have canned guns, right? Um, explain to me about, or us, about um, you have the gun um, clubs or something. Uh, yeah, basically, if you want a handgun, you kind of got to belong to a, a a gun club, like a shooting club. And right. uh, yeah, if you want a handgun, it's very, very hard to get a gun in Canada. Um, right. Yeah, if you've recently had a divorce, you might as well forget about it. Um, yeah, so so the the RCMP scrutinizes. They really flag you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they use lots of red flags. You bet. You got any okay. mental illness. Uh, you know, if I heard that somebody was uh, planning on getting a gun, I could phone the RCMP and say, I don't think that's a good idea. This person has a gun. That person won't get a gun. You know, that, exactly. yeah. It's, so it's very strict. They're talking about making it even stricter, which is still not going to solve the problem of criminals no, with guns. Because the bad guys get the guns. Now, are we also blowing this out of proportion? Because we don't want anyone to be killed. I mean, we're all sitting here talking. We're clearly not mass murderers. Okay? Are we blowing it out of proportion? Um, one might believe that the U.S. has more deaths per million by public shooting than any other country. Doesn't surprise me. It is not. In fact, the U.S. is number 11. Wow. Canada is number 14. Number one is Norway. Wow. That is Next very surprising. Next is Serbia. Number three is France, hmm. who 
basically you cannot have a gun in France. Um, then Macedonia, Albania, Slovakia, but what's ahead of us is Switzerland and Belgium and Finland. Wow. Now those are all places we consider to be very, very safe. We are way down on the list. Canada's even further. England, who I thought was higher on the list these days, uh, because they've had a lot of incidents, but now that I think of it, most of the incidents in England has been bombs and knives. Right. So they are below us at number 15. Well, think about it. You take away the guns, they they finally go for something else. Yeah, Yeah. they took away the guns, they went for something else. Because think about how few people you can kill with a knife than you could with a gun. Yeah. But this is only guns. This this mm-hmm. these survey. statistics. Yeah. Is if, it only... if you start adding in bombs, these places look worse. Now, does that also account for suicides by gun as well? No, as... public shootings. Gotcha. So it doesn't include in-house murders and anything like that. No, no. Okay. This would not be single. This would have to be multiples. Okay. Okay. Because I was about to say we are near the top five in um, deaths. We are by terrible gun. in suicide, but okay. And so is. Is white supremacy driving this? Or is that something we have totally blown out of proportion? I'd Personally, say, sorry, go ahead, Connor. I'd, I'd say it's blown out of proportion. I, I don't think any one of those shooters discriminated what color a person's skin was. Well, and, and you know, there are white supremacists out there. We live in a part of the country where they're pretty prevalent. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, they don't hide it. Okay. They're not hiding it. All these, all these left wingers that are out calling everybody a white supremacist. A white supremacist does not hide. They're they're very proud of it. And in fact, eighty six percent of Americans condemn white supremacy. They hate it. Mm-hmm. However, it gets a reaction. Strangely enough, I was going to say I do not think this is a political issue. I think this is a matter of the the people. It's a society issue. However, I also thought about it for a moment. I thought, now granted, this isn't all shootings, and I'm, I know it's not white supremacy, but my brain goes back to you know the gay bar shooting. Mm-hmm. In that case, that was definitely that was someone that was extremely homophobic to the point that they thought these people should die. Yeah, and that was. But that was a rare occurrence. I well, that was seen... a Muslim shooting. Yeah. He was Muslim, uh, but had also <laughs> struggled with uh, homophobia. Right. Which in the Muslim world, there is... It's punishable by death. Uh, punishable by death, yeah. So he had a lot of inner struggles and uh, very scary. Yeah. You know, if, if you start bringing in some Sharia law... I, I'm afraid you're going to get a lot more public shootings. For yeah. they tend to like to bomb, so I don't I don't know if the guns would come into play. However, I don't think white supremacy is very prevalent at all. We live in a part of the country where there is some, but uh, in fact, when you look at the FBI's map here, South Carolina and Louisiana are the most prevalent spots for white supremacy. And it's here, but, and they certainly don't make any bones about it, but when it, it seems to be way overblown. I think, I think another problem too is that a lot of people in the U.S., and granted, I'm talking from someone that didn't grow up around this at all, but definitely got a bit of a quote-unquote culture shock when I went to college, People don't know what that means anymore. They're mixing yeah. up white supremacy with racism, and that's not the full yeah. that's not the full picture of what white yeah. supremacy like, is. Like racism is, I hate a group of people because of who they are, like what color their skin is, and whatever yeah. that is. White supremacy is, I'm better than you because I'm white. Yeah, yeah. they're it's mixing. A very, it up. There's okay. a very big difference. Okay, well, let's. Hmm. Interesting. You want to expand upon that because that's true. That's I mean, true. like. You know, I grew up around here. There's a ton of racism around here. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I heard people in the store be like, fucking black people. Stuff like that. I've heard that. in Even passing I've been told a lot. Before. Exactly. Except and it was directed at like, me. Or like, damn Mexican. Someone like that, you know. See, and I that, never hear that. And that is racism. 
Yes, oh, absolutely. That is. that is racist. I once had a, a Mexican uh, student come up to me, and we kind of were getting to know each other, and I was on my way to the gym. I was on campus. Our campus has a gym. Right. And he stopped me in the road, and he's like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm going to the gym. He's like, really? You're going to the gym? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, white people. And they just kept walking. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, a lot of people say, like, oh, the white people are the people that are racist. No, we aren't. It's yeah. everybody. Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, so back on like the difference between white supremacists. But I have heard people, you know, working in retail in this day and age for a long period of time, I've heard people say, I actually had somebody tell me once when I was working a cash register back at the grocery store, that um, aren't you so happy we're white? What the <laughs> hell? What? What the yeah, hell? Some, some black person. Um, I don't know. She started something at customer service and went off like all angry and then this person just looks at me and is like aren't you so happy we're white okay, because, what happened like, to we don't have to, because you wouldn't act like her yeah exactly as if that had to do with what yeah. color she was I'm exactly. sorry but what happened to the stereotypical white mother or soccer mom coming and saying let me speak to your manager like that that has nothing to do with race at all you could throw that right back yeah exactly but, but that's my point that's the difference yeah mm, okay because white supremacy means you're white so you're better Racism oh, just okay. means, well, I hate blacks because... A certain minority you know, or certain yeah, I people. hate Mexicans because... You have, for whatever reason. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. And I think a lot... I think that's part of the reason that we hear everyone saying, like, oh, for example, I've, I've heard this so many times, people say Trump's a racist, and then they go say, oh, he's a white supremacist. It's because people don't know what the difference between the two wordings is, and they're really mixing it up. Now, there's also an entire... Similar Similar subject, different topic. There's also like white privilege and white entitlement, and that uh, is also very different. Yeah. Okay, what is that? Well, that's basically instead of being like, I'm white, so I'm better than you, that's like, well, I happen to be white, so I get these things, you know? But for example, I get a higher, higher wage, we'll put it this way. Yeah, exactly. You get like, a higher wage, you get, you get to go into certain places and not being looked at funny. It's other societal things that are Do those things really go on? Or it's like, you know, I can walk into a grocery store with baggy clothes and nobody's going to really think that I'm going to steal anything because I'm white. Mm -hmm. That's like white entitlement kind of thing. It's not because you necessarily think you're better. It's just you know you're white, so you don't fit the stereotype of somebody who would rob a store. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, that goes back to like... So do you think that, or do the does just do the black people think that, or do you think that because they think that? Now I'm gonna speak from personal experience here. The people that stole from the store, yeah, were drugged out looking white people, <laughs> teenagers, mm-hmm. and black people in baggy clothing. Well, I will tell you this: I worked as a manager, and also I had to bust shoplifters for about 10 years while I was in high school and college. That was an evening And I will tell you, I never busted a black person. Oh, I busted a ton of them. I never busted a black person once. I was actually scared to half the time, though. And it actually... Were you? So is that a macro racism? Probably. It's probably some sort of, and especially because there's not so many around here. Mm-hmm. That I'm not exposed as I would be in other cities. And but also, there. it seems to be like here, they're more likely to be of the poor class, like I've said before, and so they are more likely to steal. And let's not forget, because mm-hmm. of where we grow up, we take with us, it all rolls back around to what I said in the beginning, with what we have been brought up with, our experiences, our influencers, because of all of that, we come up with a certain mindset about everything in the world, from certain foods that we eat to the type of people that we hang out with. And I have a feeling because in Missouri, not technically other places, there is a bit more racism going on. There is a bit, we're a bit more, you know, traditional, I guess I could say, to where the racism thing is still slightly prevalent. Meanwhile, I have a feeling that, say, okay, randomly, let's say we grew up in California where that is heavily frowned upon, our idea of racism would be completely well, different. Sure. Yeah, we're formed by... So I think the main problem is, instead of just pretending on where we grow up, we need to actually get rid of it everywhere, so that way everyone has a baseline of what morality-wise is correct. You know, for an example, back to that, um, there was an incident where 
I, when I was working customer service, and that's usually the people that stop all the thefts and keep an eye out at the doors and whatnot. Exactly. Um, basically, there was this black guy. Typical big guy. Pretty muscular, semi-baggy clothing, and he just looked so angry. You know, and he goes and he starts to walk out the door with a basket of stuff that I know he hasn't paid for. Mm -hmm. And my manager looks at me and is like, are you going to stop him? And I'm like, no, "No, he scares me. I'm not going to stop that. I was like, if you want to call the cops, we can, but he's going to be gone. Yeah. You know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not taking that chance. And I have a feeling, knowing Ian, that if that person doesn't, forget the black issue, if that was also also a tall, muscular white guy, or even an Asian guy that just looked upset or angry, you would have had the same response. I would have been. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, but the fact is, like I said, almost everybody I saw steal were from those three categories. Okay. okay. You know, in a hillbilly elegy, uh, Danny Vance points out that um, all the people he wrote about being from having drug problems, welfare moms. Um, none of his people in Ohio were black. They were white. Hmm. And so I, you know, I, every race has issues. And um, everybody has. They're society I, I issues. They're not. They, they are they're society. not racial issues. They, they're exactly. really not racial issues, and sometimes I think we do label it as a race issue, and it's not. Um, I, I do kind of get back to the guns. Okay, um, here's the scenario: the stock market crashes, the banks crash. Okay, um, you know, and maybe this comes from a sunspot. And all of our computers have crashed. Okay? And you're sitting here. Think about sitting here in this place. Okay? This house. How are you going to protect the food you have from the neighbors? Would you want guns then? For one, I wouldn't be stationary. But because the scenario says I would be stationary. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you a scenario. Without guns, I would start to block all entrances. Mm-hmm. Um, improvise some weaponry. But the neighbors say he's got a gun. He he bought one at the underground. Well, then I'm going to hurry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, and then I'm going to improvise some weaponry. First thing I'm probably going to do is set up a safe spot in the basement by moving all my food down there so I can seclude a small part that I know I can keep safe. Mm-hmm. And then I will expand through the rest of the house once I know it's safe in order to keep the rest of that safe. And you don't think a gun would help you? It would. But it's not worth it? It's not worth it. Okay. Because that kind of situation is... I think it is worth it. I, I would rather keep a bag and an escape plan for if that ever happens so that I can go live safely. Okay. Let's say that you get a job, you're going out on the road, and you're traveling, okay? Mm-hmm. And you've got a wife at home. Maybe you're not in a great neighborhood. You want your wife to have a gun to protect herself. I'd still say no. Okay. I would rather move her out of that neighborhood. See, people in my generation would say yes. I, Strangely enough, sorry, Connor, go ahead. I, I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's a parent thing. You think mm-hmm. different once you become a parent. And, Good point. And Ian's Good not point. a parent. That's and, right. And uh, That's right. it's a totally different game when you're a parent, Ian. Um, yeah, you. I, I, I am guessing you're going to change your mind once you, you become a father. Good point. Very good point. It'll be interesting to find out if the podcast is still going. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go get in a hurry. Okay. 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 Well, okay. we'll have to agree to do this again. We will. We will definitely do this. Um, there's um, one more subject I want to talk about just for a minute. And that is, we, we touched on it a second ago, but that's toxic masculinity. Really? Is masculinity toxic? First of all, I don't believe it is. I mean, so is femininity. Exactly. But... <laughs> exactly. I, mean, I don't know if that's a word. What are we doing to men? But is I... there a war against men? You know. Even as a woman, I say yes. Yeah. I do too. That's like I was scared when I worked with, uh, working around some of my female coworkers 
because I was like, I'd seen all the stuff on the news. I'm like, I know I'm not a bad person, but oh, with all the stuff I've seen on the news, I'm like, are they just going to like say something to say something? Yeah. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, let's see this. But, you know, Connor, next week, Ian starts teaching. I do. Okay. Oh, wow. Cool. I mean, because of this toxic masculinity, you have to be careful around these young female students. I do. Because they're going to... You run the risk of them misreading you. Especially with that. How scared does that make you? Especially with our teenagers. It's actually pretty scared. Yeah. I, it would make me scared. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to teach the super little kids because I'm, I don't do well with young kids. So elementary yeah. is kind of out of the question. I look like a high schooler. So I'm kind of scared to teach the high schoolers because <laughs> I just look like one of them. Um, so I'm stuck with middle schoolers. And middle schoolers are sometimes the most hectic minded of that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, because they're reaching sexuality, so yeah. everything becomes sexual. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm just like, what do I do? Yeah, and I, I yeah, that, that's the interesting part. So, you know, when they say toxic, toxic masculinity, I say bring it on. Yeah, yeah I, I really don't get the term. Yeah, the, I'm a guy, and there's some douchebag guys out there. You know, is Absolutely. it toxic m- masculinity? I, you can call it what you want. They're douchebags. Yeah. Uh, not, not being toxic or not, it's like I'm a guy. My body's built differently. Great. Yeah. My voice sounds different. Great. I yeah. tend to look different because, I mean, that's kind of the general male thing to do, but also I kind of like how I go about my look. Yeah. So it's not necessarily maybe, maybe I was raised in a way that maybe you want to look like that, but like none of this has to do with like the toxic stuff. Yeah. I don't automatically assume because I'm a man I'm better than a female or something like that. No, because I've, I've heard you've got a mother that would kick your ass. For that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's more like, yeah, I'm a man. So if all things not being said, I would be naturally physically stronger, but yeah. that's a body thing. Yeah. I mean, that's genetic. Mean, and that's what I'm saying. That's just the way you're made. Men it, are stronger than women naturally. How yeah. now? They can toughen up. Well, here's the thing. I also think that there's a masculinity part that I think goes too far. And I'm talking from an emotional standpoint. There is a piece of masculinity that I believe is toxic. And that is the fact that oh, well, men shouldn't be emotional because they are men, or yeah. men are not allowed to cry because they're a man. Like, that, that's well, the part where like, When talking. I was young, I was taught that men are scary and all of them want sex and they can't well. stop. I was taught that as okay, well. Okay, that is deeply damaging. And I yes. wonder how many of these people are yelling around, running around yelling about men that were taught the same thing. And that was very wrong for our mothers to do. Very wrong. I mean, granted, you know, with my own growing up and all of that, I know who I am as a person, but I also know that growing up, I kind of realized that a piece of the reason why I might not have hung out around men or, you know, didn't think about having a boyfriend or something like that was because of that fear. That yeah, fear of like, fear. oh man, if I date a man, he's going to take real. advantage of me. And, and I think a lot of that came from um over parenting trying to protect our daughters in fact I know there's a book called King Solomon's Journey mm-hmm. there is a chapter in there you're plugging your own book I know <laughs> <laughs> but anyway about that very issue and it was written in 2010 before we started talking about it mm. but um very dangerous very very dangerous thing to do and even if a mother's like heart is, go ahead this is a problem of people accepting who they are and who other people are I mean, that's just like... Exactly. And I mean, they just look at the facts and they go crazy. I don't know if that's jealousy, hate... Well, and it could be... I mean, you could have a mother that was raped when she was 12. Yeah, that too. And and she's trying to protect her daughter. I mean, some things... In fact, most things from parents come from very good intentions. Yes, That doesn't mean they're not a mistake. Exactly. And I have a feeling that people don't raise mass shooters. No. Of course and, not. And, and, but maybe they did something. And maybe it was out of the very best intentions. And I think the biggest thing, it, let's say, for example, if that is the case. You know, if it, let's say, oh, we'll blame the parents for this because they should have not raised their kids this way. And that, you, you're a mother yourself. You know that when you raise a child, whether it be a boy or a girl, you raise them to what you think is best for them. If, exactly. they, if they make a mistake and it comes back to you, you know, 
you come you come thinking, well, what could I have done? What could I have done differently? I couldn't have because I did what I thought I had to do at the moment. I think it's the problem is a lot of micromanaging and not allowing the kids to make mistakes. That's true. That's and well, make their own decisions. It's do- a big bad ugly world out there. Yeah. And you, and you're right. We have quit letting people or kids make mistakes. I have heard that you know. I mean, you let me mistakes and basically just said, I told you so. Are you going to do it again? Yeah. Yeah. And personally, <laughs> that's you know. kind of a good way of doing it. I do know that with parents, the, the reason I'm hoping, optimistic-wise, I hope that the reason parents do that is because they care about their kid. They don't want their kid to go through the pain. I remember as a child, my mother used to tell me, well, I, didn't, I, I made this decision for you because I didn't want you to have to go through the pain that I did, or I didn't want you to feel pain. And, and I understand that your kids have to. They have to. And I, even at an early age, I told her, Mom, the only way that I am going to learn as a person, I got to learn the hard way. And, and some things. There's some things. And that's like, you can't learn the hard way by walking across the street with moving cars. Yeah. 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 There are things you can't. You can't yeah, absolutely not. You know, I as I, I know we're we're going up against a time limit here. I wanna say that we've had this whole conversation and there's one thing we did not mention that we don't know how often this comes into play and uh, I know we really don't have time to go into it, but it, it apparently wasn't at the front of our minds and that's drugs. We did not mention the impact that drugs have upon these mass shootings. And quite frankly, I don't know what it is. Next time on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> that, that's going to have to be next time. Okay, I can uh, agree with that. that. We didn't even mention it. <laughs> yeah, because it's yeah. always a big one. We don't always agree about life's a journey, and we're all in it together. And um, the last week has proven that. Um, thoughts and prayers go out to all the victims and their families. Uh, Godspeed, Connor. Thanks to our guests. We want them to come back. And um, thanks to our listeners out there. Speed, everyone, and thanks for listening.